Well, by the time our flight with Willow Air arrived, we had caught a mess of fish. All the perfect size for a batch of pickled pike. At least for today, our mission here was complete. But for the Alaska Department of Fish and Game, the war against pike is far from over. Napa Auto Parts is proud to present Napa's Inside Alaska. There's a lot of talk in Alaska about declining salmon runs in some areas. Now, whenever there's a bad year for salmon returns, the blame often gets laid at the door of commercial fishing, or some people blame the management of sport fishing regulations. Now, while those are major elements affecting salmon fisheries, there's another factor that doesn't get the same publicity. Pike have gotten into non-native areas and their numbers, because they're out of balance there, they've been improperly introduced by people that are breaking the law. Northern pike are native to this area of Alaska, the interior, west, and north. But over 50 years ago, they started showing up in the south central region. And they were first introduced, we think, back in the 1950s from the north side of the Alaska range and were illegally stocked into a lake up on the Yentna drainage. And over the past 50 or more years, they've expanded and colonized throughout any open water systems. And in doing so, they've had fairly severe impact on some drainages, depending on the fish species. In parts of Alaska where pike are native, there are a variety of fish species to eat. Typically when there's pike, there's not anything else, right? You know, you would think, wouldn't you? But there's a good population of lake trout. Oh, really? Good, huge population of whitefish in there. Which is what the pike like to feed. You notice know, white's been right. sort of the, the lure of the sorna. So pike don't decimate any one species, and a balanced ecosystem is maintained. But according to the Alaska Department of Fish and Game, in the South Central region, pike have shifted the balance of native species and are now targeting juvenile silvers, kings, sockeye, and trout. They get so dense in, a, in an area, particularly an area that has salmon, where the smolt run up and down the stream, that they literally glut themselves on eating all the salmon fry until the point where they wipe up the other species. So say like a coho salmon that spends one to two years, most often two years in freshwater environment, are real susceptible to predation because they seek out the same backwater channels as the northern pike. That all that's left is northern pike and pretty soon there's so many of them that they all end up about this big. When the food situation hits this stage, the pike become stunted start reproducing at a younger age, and the water system ends up being full of nothing but small pike. So when they take over a system, it's disaster for the salmon run. And in many south central areas, general pike fishing hasn't been able to keep pike numbers down. In general, what we find is that out of all the pike that are caught, only about 30% of them are kept and 70% are released. You know, they're, a, they're bony fish, no one likes to keep the small ones. So Fish and Game decided on drastic measures. No bag limit, no releasing of pike. That's a new regulation that the Board of Fish adopted at this last winter meeting. That was their best effort to try to kill everything that has been caught and go from a 30% retention to 100%. So how can you help make a difference? Obviously, follow the regulation. But you can also call Fish and Game for more options. Okay, now we're doing our part in trying to rid vicious pike. Even the little guys, they're just a handful. They're a lot of fun to catch. They hit like an alligator, fight like crazy, and hopefully in the areas where fish and game are trying to lower their numbers, some people will go in there and discover how much fun it is to fish for them. Hopefully, with these extreme measures, we can push pike back into their native habitat and save these valuable salmon runs that are under attack.